If you think about where we're going in the next 10, 20 years, the use of evidence is going to be key to improving healthcare. This course is unique in that it's designed for those who are in the workplace, in the work setting, who are trying to apply evidence in practice and want to learn more. And many of the people who come on this course then go on to use their skills to directly affect and change practice. This course doesn't teach people to be researchers per se, it teaches people to understand and use research so that when their patient comes and asks them, oh, I read about such and such or I heard about this on the news, does that apply for me? It enables the healthcare professionals to understand and make those informed decisions and to tell the patients, well this is what the research is about and put it in a language that makes, makes sense to everybody. I'm a full-time physician and I'm also a mum of a two-year-old and so it was really important for me to find a course that was flexible. The nice thing about this program has been that I can take a week off from my clinical work, um, I can easily come to Oxford, um, spend my week studying and being in a very academic environment and then at the end of the week I can head home and the rest of the course is online. Um, I feel very supported by the forums and I can stay in touch with my colleagues that I've worked with here. Uh, but at the same time, I haven't had to put my clinical career or the rest of my life on hold to be able to do a master's. Well, I've had a, a week here doing a, a teaching evidence-based practice uh, module. And uh, it's been a very interesting module, as, as most of them are. Start the week with uh, uncertainty, some uncertainty about what's coming and what's going on. And surprisingly enough, as I've found with each of the modules, you get to the end of it and all of a sudden everything becomes crystal clear. Are we happy with the studies they included? Are they fine most of the studies? The module that I teach, which is the practice of evidence-based healthcare, is really this one of the core modules of the, of the Masters. And once you've come on this module as a clinician, whatever field you work in, you will be able to effectively search for information, you'll be able to ask a focused clinical question that's relevant to your practice, you will be able to access that information, and then most importantly, be able to critically appraise the information that you find to help you make your clinical decisions. For us, in terms of teaching, it's really important to create a very relaxed environment, a very friendly environment, and also what we like to call a safe environment. So people come in, and for us, the more questions you have, the better. No question is a stupid question. Understanding the study design that has generated the research that you are considering to inform your practice is absolutely crucial. Um, if it had been a poor study design, then basically the results aren't worth considering at all. Systematic reviews, for example, need good quality, say, randomised controlled trials to feed into them. And then that systematic review has to be conducted rigorously as well. And it's very important that readers of the literature understand how important good design is. This particular source of heterogeneity, you say, well, that's what's causing the difference between the studies, and it isn't that. One of the challenges that, that is in the room when we're teaching is that the ch it's the challenges that people who are practitioners face every day. They have to make decisions, they have to help people make choices and give advice. So they need to be able to pick up the information and, to some extent, break it. Say, what's wrong with this? If there's nothing wrong with it, I can use it. So what we're trying to do on the modules over five very intensive days is make them think about particular topics and think about them so hard that they could break them. And if, if the topic survives, so if they've thought about, was this review biased? Did the reviewers set out to conclude something which they've ended up concluding? Have they searched hard enough for material? We're trying to give them those skills to do good research, but in reality, for most of them, it will be to identify good research so that they can use it. Because they're making tougher decisions than we ever make as researchers. They're making decisions about the, the care of, of other individuals. What I found great about the MSc is I was able to select the courses that I needed to help me apply the research skill. So for the systematic review course, 
I brought a question to the course. I was able to work through it throughout the week and then able to do my assignment on that and then I actually did the systematic review right after. So I was able to actually take what I learned and apply it, implement it, and then publish a paper afterwards. And I don't know many courses were able to do that so successfully. We have a unique structure that combines the University of Oxford Centre for Evidence-Based Medicine with continuing education. So this is about lifelong learning and a process that goes beyond just your master's. And that's important because you need to stay connected to a community who want to improve the skills and the methods of evidence-based healthcare. And that's part of what's unique about Oxford. You'll be plugged in for the rest of your life. For me, it totally changed my career. It led me temporarily into an academic position and then onto The Lancet, where because of this course, I've been able to uh, support so many projects get involved in so many activities that have allowed me to play a small role in improving health for people around the world and that's really exciting. We are bringing 20 years of experience to the delivery of evidence-based healthcare. Everybody in our centre is involved in improving healthcare in research methods and then combines that with teaching. So you'll often find them using and talking to you about their own research, their own articles, and that's unique in a way. The breadth of people we have is so great that we can cover all of these areas with world-leading tutors. Before I started this course uh, and this program, I think that I was much like other clinicians and I would look at things like clinical practice guidelines and the conclusions of studies and I would really take them for face value. And I think it's really important now that I go back and I look at things like the methods and the results sections. And that's one of the reasons why taking a, taking a course and, and doing this program has been really helpful for me, is learning how to critically appraise that primary literature myself. Whatever you're considering, do something in evidence-based practice, because you will improve the care of your patients. If you want to come here, you'll get the uniqueness of the Centre for Evidence-Based Medicine, you'll get world-leading teachers, and then you'll get all the facilities of Oxford University. It's been a blast. It really has been a unique experience like nothing else. And the one-week courses where you're with individuals from all over the world, from Australia, North America, Europe, South America, the chance to go for dinner, go to the pub and talk about intellectual ideas, it really is an environment like nothing else. I certainly will miss it. I mean, Oxford's a place that, that gets into your skin. I think once you come here once, you've, you've been bitten and you always want to come back. I would say that if you are thinking about it, you have an interest in evidence-based medicine, just come and do this course. You, you won't regret it for one moment.